Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the Loop Deck Live. Little console that I got from Loop Deck, a uh, little disclaimer here, I did get it for free. Uh, they sent it to me to test it out, try it out, and I'll give you, like always, my honest to God review and uh, thought about this little device. I don't do a lot of streaming, I actually don't do streaming at all, so I'm not going to talk about streaming. If you're looking for a uh, streaming comparison or talk, you should check another video. But I'm mainly going to talk about what I do the most, which is photo editing. And that is mainly on Lightroom. I did try this uh, device uh, for DaVinci Resolve and for FCPX. Um, I think it can give a plus. But uh, in my opinion, as of right now, I prefer using my keyboard shortcuts, which for me uh, are faster. Um, if you're someone who's starting to edit on any of those editing programs, even Premiere Pro or you know any other editing program, I think this could be a plus because uh, you could from the get-go, from the scratch, from the beginning, uh, learn how to use it and how to assign macros, functions, and uh, really use it to speed up your workflow. Uh, in my case, uh, this is not the case for editing videos. I have used the Loop Deck Plus uh, over the past two years, which is right here. Um, is this device, this little guy here, better than the Loop Deck Plus? We'll find out in this video. Let's talk about the layout and functions of this little device. There are six rotation knobs. Eight round buttons, 12 touchscreen buttons, as many pages as you want, both touchscreen and rotation knobs. It is made of plastic, which makes it lightweight and uh, honestly great for transport. You can use the Loop Deck app, as for any other Loop Deck device, to customize your device and assign macros and functions to any of the knobs and buttons. I'm gonna cut to the chase and go straight into the pros and cons. I have used this device now for several weeks and um, I wrote down everything that to me was great and an improvement in my workflow and everything that wasn't or that was a drawback or something that would not improve my workflow. So in case you guys are looking to buy this device, here are my pros and cons. This device is great when you're doing editing marathons such as weddings or any photo shoot for that matter because you can see and change all the basic sliders such as the temperature, the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, the whites, the blacks and so forth. Um, so that makes long editing sessions faster and easier in my opinion. You can edit in full screen mode. That is a plus because when you want to see your photos and the details in a big screen or even a small one, let's say you have a small MacBook, uh, 13 inch, let's say, and you don't have a lot of real estate on your screen, that way you can see what you're doing. The only drawback to that is that there's a little delay when you change um, any settings. So you just need to think with that when you're editing. The one thing that I really like about this uh, device, like for the Loop Deck Plus, however, the Loop Deck Plus has pre-assigned text on it. See, here you have, for example, shadows, highlights, vibrance, saturation, temperature, tint, and so forth. So those are already assigned. You could assign something else to it using the secondary um, uh, function mode, but the writings are there and can tend to be very confusing. The fact that you can customize this guy to the T, like you can literally customize everything. So the first thing I did when I received it is I changed the, the dials here, the rotation knobs, and I put the sequence of every slider in Lightroom. So you, you really see from the temperature to the tint, the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, and so forth. So I really put every single slider in sequence so that when I'm editing my photos, I can just use muscle memory and know exactly what I'm editing without having to even look at the, the knobs. And that makes it very fast because I don't have to touch the mouse at all. This is great when you want to use presets in Lightroom. The reason why is because you can assign a menu. I assign menu three, for example, to it. And when I press there, I can see Light and Airy presets and my Peter McKinnon presets. So I'm ha I have those two. When you press on, on, let's say, Light and Airy, what you see there is all your presets at one glance. So you can just choose, select them all one after the other and see which one looks better on your image. Um, go back to the previous one, go to the next menu, change, for example, the, the color temperature, and then go back to the, the previous page. And if you want to go back to another uh, presets page, you just go on to the main page and so forth. So it's very simple, very streamlined. Nothing that you can do with your mouse, that's for sure, but you can just have one little device there and toggle between presets, editing, 
uh, library and you can you can really do that with ease without having to move around with your mouse. If you're someone who's used to using your keyboard, for example, um, I don't know if this is gonna replace your keyboard uh, for shortcuts, but for me, uh, this from the get-go, right away from the first usage, started improving the speed of editing. Another cool thing is you can change, for example, the exposure from the library menu. So you can see your photos in the library, you can toggle you know, between the images, and you can change the exposure right from the console without having to go into the editing mode. Uh, that can be great for little touch-ups, fix-ups, like quick little changes, and you can do it straight from the library. To rank and group images, once again, this is all built into their profile, the, the, the profile that they give you when you get the device. So that makes it very simple to uh, assign stars and group your images. Uh, nothing you can do, once again, with your keyboard, because on your keyboard you have the the number pad, but let's say you're not at the office and you wanna have that with your laptop and you can just toggle between images with one knob and you can assign uh, the ranking to your images. So once again, that makes it a little bit faster, a little bit better. To me at least, I think this improves the speed in Lightroom. Not all programs are supported by this device. Uh, they're not all included when you receive it. However, you can download profiles. Uh, other users have created profiles worldwide and, um, and Loop Deck has done the same. And what you can do is you can go on their website, you can download the profiles, you can upload it in the, in the app and use them. Uh, so basically it's limitless because you can either um, make it your own or download a profile and make it your own or simply just download a profile and keep that profile as is. So it really opens uh, the possibility to use this for a lot of things. It also has a little stand which is great. It puts it at an angle on the table so it's easier to see, easier to use. You can remove it easily. Yeah, it's a little plus. And now the cons because there are some cons. These are mainly uh, things that I'm addressing to Loop Deck uh, that might be changed or that might be reviewed for the next device uh, to make it even better. Some uh, icons are not included, for example, FCPX. Um, Final Cut is a program that I think a lot of users are using right now. Same for DaVinci Resolve, for example. Those do not have an icon. There's a way to upload your own icon. So what I did is I went online, found the FCPX icon, downloaded it, um, and then I use that into the program to show it on my little uh, screen on the device. It's a minor detail, but Lightroom and Photoshop, for example, have their icons. It looks great, and it would be awesome if they could add that to more programs. I use this for Photoshop. I'm not a big Photoshop user uh, overall, but I tried to use it to reduce the brush size, and it was very laggy, very, very laggy. Like, it, it took several seconds to go down and it was just, you know, not going smoothly and there was a delay. Uh, that's something you cannot have because it, it will immediately make you stop using it. So that's something that needs to be fixed. I have one of the latest Mac from last year. It's, uh, it, all the specs are bumped up. So my computer is definitely not the issue. I downloaded the latest software. I um, added the, the plugin for Photoshop. I did everything that was necessary. So I think this is a bug that needs to be fixed and addressed. You receive a nice cable with the device. Um, it says loop deck on it here. It's at an angle, so it's it's a great uh, great little cable. Uh, it feels also, it's like fabric-y, so it's very, very nicely made. Um, however, this is only one meter long. Uh, one meter to me is not enough because, uh, if, I mean, if you're editing on the go with your laptop and you just put it there on the table and you plug it, it's plenty. But as soon as you want to use it as a setup, for example, on my desk, um, I have my Mac, which is on a corner of the table because I have an external monitor, external mouse and, and everything. Um, you have to plug it into the mouse. I cannot plug it on an external hub which basically means that the one meter cable was way too short and I had to use another cable that I have, another USB-C cable that's two meters long and that was fine. So maybe next time do it a meter 50 um, or two meters. Let's talk about the haptic feedback. Uh, this device has haptic feedback, so when you press, it vibrates a little bit. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with haptic feedback when you're using it, for example, on the iPhone up to the iPhone uh, SE. Uh, it gives you a little vibration that makes you feel like you pressed a button, but it's not true. You didn't really press a button. It's just a, a, a fake vibration. Um, this is not like that. This is not the case. This actually vibrates, and when you have it on the table, it makes the whole table sound loud, like you, you really hear the buzz 
it buzzes and it's very disturbing. <laughs> If you're using this device for editing marathons, like I was saying, and you're pressing a lot of buttons all the time, you, you will go crazy if you're using that feedback. So this is one thing that I disabled from the get-go, from the first day that I received it, so it's gone, not using it. You have different type of vibrations, and I put the shorter one, the, the, the least loud one, but it's still very loud. So that's something to either fix or just remove altogether. As I said, there's a little stand here to hold the device a little bit on an angle. It's great, uh, made of plastic, which is fine because that way it's, uh, it's lighter and easy to transport. However, um, I would like to see this with hinges so that you can actually fold it behind the device and keep it on because you risk to lose it, to break it, and every time putting it on and off, it's not very simple and comfortable. It's not hard, but it's just, it, you, you have a risk that it's gonna break. The LCD screen, in my opinion, is a little bit too low resolution for a 2021 device. Is it something that uh, is gonna change my life? No. Is it a big deal? No. Uh, but having a little bit more contrast to it would make it easier to see on any angle and it would be a bit more pleasing, especially if you have it in front of you on your desk uh, all the time when you're editing. So who is this device for? This device is for people that have to do long editing sessions that don't want to look away from their photos when they're editing, like you have to all the time with your eyes go on the sliders, go back on the image, go on the sliders, go back on the image, especially if you have a bigger monitor, you just want to keep your eyes on the image. Um, it is for people that have a small screen, so you can uh, gain some real estate on the screen and you can remove some of some parts of the programs, uh, for example, the sliders on the right or even the, the presets on the left, and you can just have a bigger uh, image on your screen. It is for people that want to have a tactile feeling, uh, that want to be able to have uh, all the controls at their fingertips and, um, and, and have it all right there, all together, packed up in a little package. Last but not least, I think it is for people that don't want to remember shortcuts on their keyboard or that don't want to uh, to create and remember macros on their keyboard so you can see everything visually on this little device and um, I, I personally like this way more than the loop deck plus uh, which was already a very good device and I think it's still a good device for people that do a lot of editing uh, some people will love this some people will not and I think for those that don't uh, this is more um, the product that they need. So in conclusion, I think this is a, a great improvement from the Loop Deck Plus, the original Loop Deck, because you can use it with more programs. Um, it is more visual, you can assign more uh, buttons and more stuff. There's less buttons than this one, but it makes it less confusing as well, in my opinion. So I think this is gonna stay on my desk, I'm gonna keep using it to edit my photos in Lightroom, and I have a lot of weddings coming up, so it's gonna be great. Like always, stay tuned, keep shooting, subscribe if you didn't do it yet. Write down in the comment section below what you think about this device, if you own it, if you want to buy it, if you don't want to buy it anymore, I will be glad to know that. And I see you in my next video. Take care.